Hi, David Rollman here. Welcome to today's video in which I'm going to try to answer uh, a question that a lot of people have, and I'm going to do it a little differently. I've done some videos on the topic before, but today it's going to be a little different. It has to do with modes. As you know, last Monday, we had a masterclass in which I taught you how to play the modes, and it was hard work. You might still be working on the video. I hope you are. It's going to be very be beneficial if you take the steps. Take your time with that. Um, but a question that came up was, how do I um, take a mode and write a backing track in that particular mode? I think it's a great question because not only is it going to be useful for songwriting, but also as you're learning how to play these modes, it will give your ears a chance to adapt to the sound of the modes, which is very important when you're playing. So to answer that question, we're not going to go into much theory and, um, and steps and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to learn by doing. So together in this video, we're going to create seven backing tracks in the key of D, and we're going to take each of the seven church modes and write a backing track in that particular mode. So we'll write a backing track in D Ionian, D Dorian, D Phrygian, D Lydian, D Mixolydian, D Aeolian, and D Locrian together. And I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to use logic, but these steps can be done in any sequencer. And even if you don't have a digital audio workstation, a DAW, you don't have to to make the to benefit from this lesson. You're still going to learn help some different things that are going to be very useful in your quest for playing modally. So let's get started right now. Keep in mind that these backing tracks are going to be fairly simple. I'm just going to show you how to bring out the color of the modes and you can be as fancy as you want. But we're just going to get started. I've got Logic Pro 10 opened up here. Again, you can use anything you want. Usually I like to start with a drum beat, something that we can we can jam to. And for that, we're going to use one of my favorite uh, drum beat available for that kind of stuff. And it's a Spectrosonics um, plugin. It's the Stylus plugin. I'm going to open that up and it comes with a lot of really inspiring loops. Um, and you'll be able to hear that in a second. I'm going to go into my EXP libraries that's, that comes with the software. It's really cool. And uh, let's see what they have in the liquid grooves. So I've got this synced to my host. So that means that if I change the tempo here, the tempo within the, the instrument is going to change too. We're going to start at something kind of comfortable. I feel that 98 beats per minute is a uh, comfortable speed for jamming. That works. I'm just going to drag and drop that into my sequencer. Once that's done, I'm going to add another track and we're going to have the, the bass here. Let's use IK Multimedia's Motto Bass, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. If you want to check that out, you can. That's great. <laughs> that works. Now we need to decide which mode we're going to work in. And we decided that we're going to work in the key of D, so D Ionian, D Dorian, D Phrygian, D etc. And we're going to start determining which mode we're going to go. Um, go with here. We're going to start with the major modes, Ionian, Lydian, Mixolydian. You do need to have an idea of what these modes are, are built with, the formula of these modes, which you should know if you watched Monday's video. But I will list them below. And we're going to start with the major modes, Ionian, Lydian, Mixolydian. The first one will be Ionian. And we're going to start a very, very, very simple, basic line, the simplest bass line you could have, and that's just D. So we're just going to record Ds over our um, our loop here. And we'll copy and paste that short bass section for the length of this particular backing track, which will extend later on. So this would work in D Ionian, right? Because we've got a drum loop and just these, and if you played a D Ionian scale over that, it would work fine. But all the other modes starting in D would also work there. 
because you remember you've got to match the elements. So just a D means that you can play D whatever you want. It will work. Let's um, add some clues as to what mode we're in. And that's going to be added with a synth or a keyboard or something like that. So we're going to create another track. I'm going to name this bass. And we'll add something maybe from uh, Omnisphere. You know, it's my favorite, one of my favorites. We're going to go through the, the collection of different samples that we have in Omnisphere. There's a lot, as you know. And we'll pick something um, not too present, but something kind of cool that we can improvise with adding some chords. Okay, here is where you can make it or break it. You really need to follow the formula of the mode, which is the Ionian, and there are several approaches, but the simplest approach is to have two chords. At least that's the approach that I usually take, and then you can embellish. The first chord is the natural chord that is extracted from the mode you're working on. So think three note chord or four note, four note chord. It doesn't matter and just build that chord in the standard traditional way. Root, third, fifth, seventh. So in this case, a root, which is D. The third is major. The fifth is perfect. And the seventh is major, if we wanted the four note chord. So that first chord already eliminates all the minor modes. So if I play that with my backing track, I'd have something like this. If I stop there, if that's the only chord, that's not enough information to know that I'm really an Ionian. Why? Because I'm playing a root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh, and there's another mode that has those four notes. Lydian shares those notes. So if I just heard that chord, I could be playing D Ionian and D Lydian. Both would work fine. I need another chord in there or another note at some point that differentiates D Ionian from D Lydian. If, if I comp compared both, the characteristic note of Ionian is that perfect fourth. In other words, if I have a major seven chord with a perfect fourth, at some point I hear that perfect fourth, I've got all the important elements to know that this is Ionian. So I'm gonna do that. I could either build a chord um, using that perfect fourth or Let's do it simple. I've got my starting chord, D major 7. And I'm going to replace one of these notes with a perfect fourth. So I'm going to replace the closest note to the perfect fourth that I have in that chord, which would be the major third. So instead of having root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh, I would have root, perfect fourth, major, uh, perfect fifth, and major seventh. That chord. So I've got a D major 7 here, and here's my second chord that has a perfect fourth. Now if I tried to play Lydian on this backing track, it would work on the first chord, but as, I, as soon as I hit the next one, it doesn't sound well, it doesn't sound good, because Lydian has an augmented fourth instead of the perfect one that we had here. So that particular backing track, that chord progression, which is very simple, is specifically done to work in D Ionian because of that perfect fourth. And you're not hearing Ionian here yet, but you hear it right here. And that's our backing track. That's a D Ionian backing track. And that's going to be, the, in essence, what you're going to get when you download this. I'll make it a little fancier, a little more interesting, maybe add a few fills here and there, but in essence, that's what you get. That's the D Ionian backing track. Okay, so I took my first section here, which was Ionian, copied and pasted that a little further in the track to work on the Lydian now. What differentiates Ionian from Lydian? We just said it, it's the fourth. So we know that from the Lydian mode, we can extract a major seven chord. We know that and that's happening on the first section. So if we just have that, that could be Lydian. 
We're going to modify that second chord, which has a perfect fourth, to make it Lydian. And Lydian does not have a perfect fourth, it has an augmented fourth. All we need to do is to go in that um, chord here, which had a root, a perfect fourth, and make that perfect fourth augmented fourth. And now that chord is screaming Lydian. Right there. If you played Ionian over that, it would not work because the perfect fourth would clash with the augmented fourth. So I'm going to copy that second chord paste it right here, and now we have our Lydian backing track. And right here. Very Lydian sounding. Then you can go back with your ears and tweak things a little bit, but we know that we have, in essence, two chords. The first one is the pure chord extracted from the mode, root, third, fifth, seventh, if we want. The second chord will have an indication at some point that um, we are specifically in a particular mode using the characteristic note of that mode. We're going to move on here to the mixolydian. For the mixolydian, because I know my formula, I know that mixolydian is, is really closer to Ionian than Lydian. So I'm going to copy that first section that I had. I'm going to copy that right here. And again, we're going to modify some chords here in order to, to bring out the color of the mixolydian. Mixolydian is just like Ionian, except that it has a minor seventh. So I need to take my first chord, which is a major seven chord. So that wouldn't work with mixolydian. And I'm going to alter that seventh to make it minor. And now I have a chord with a root, major third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. In essence, that is enough. That chord screams mixolydian because the characteristic notes of the mixolydian, the notes that differentiate mixolydian from other major modes, are included in the natural chord that we have. So as a second chord, if I wanted to add a second chord, I could pretty much do whatever I want. In this case, I'll leave it as it is. I'll just make sure that that seventh is minor as opposed to major, or I'll leave the seventh out and I just use a root which is what happened here. So this backing track right here, as long as I copy that, I replace the major seven chord with a dominant seven, which we just had, it's gonna be a mixolydian backing track. Mixolydian. All right, we covered our major modes. Let's move on to the minor modes. So for this, I'm still gonna start with my Ionian mode as a basis. I'm gonna copy that first section. And I'm just gonna modify the chords. Let's start with the Dorian mode. I'm gonna look at my chord. Dorian, if I extract the chord from Dorian, I have root, minor third. So I'm gonna move that major third to a minor, perfect fifth, and minor seventh. So that major seventh, I need to make it minor. So that first chord now will fit. The second chord that I had for Ionian was root, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and root again. That would work, but that doesn't include the characteristic note of Dorian. So what is the note that differentiates Dorian from its minor mode friends? It's the sixth, because the Dorian mode is the only minor mode that has a major sixth within the church mode context. So we're going to have to include that major sixth at some point. And uh, we have one, um, if I take my fifth, make it major sixth, that should work. That's Dorian right there. So I'm going to copy and paste these two first chords. The first one was a chord made of root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. And the second chord is a chord made of a root. We have a perfect fourth. We could make it a minor third, a major sixth, and a root again. And that would be Dorian.
Here's our backing track. Very Dorian sounding. It's gonna go on and on and on. All right, we are more than halfway through. I'm gonna copy and paste this Dorian mode here, and now we'll work on the Phrygian. So the Phrygian mode, if I extract the first chord, I have the same exact chord that I had in Dorian. So I can leave that chord there. Um, root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. So that's good. The characteristic note of the Phrygian mode is the minor second. So I need to hear that minor second at some point in the second chord right here. So let's take a different approach. I mean, I could do whatever I want as long as I have that minor second and as long as the other notes are, are extracted from the D Phrygian mode. So that's what we'll do. I'm gonna play my D Phrygian here. Got a root, a minor second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, um, minor seventh, and root. So I could play any of these notes as long as I have that minor second at some point. That would work. For example, because I have that minor second. The other notes don't matter, just use your ear. So let's give that a try. That works perfectly. I'm going to quantize that. So quantizing is basically just making those notes really stick to the to the rhythm, to the to the tempo. Because there's imperfections when I play, and that's really making locking it in time. And then I will just take that, those first two chords, and paste them right here. And now if I only had that first chord, I could be in Dorian, Phrygian, even Aeolian, because that's a minor seventh chord. But it's on that second chord that I'm going to really hear the characteristic note of Phrygian, which is that minor second. That's really Phrygian. You can't play anything else. You can try, but it's not going to work because your major second will clash with the minor second of the chord. So that's how we do it. Almost done. Let's um, Again, we'll start with the Dorian here as our basis. I'm going to paste that here. We're going to work with the Aeolian. So if I extract the chord from the Aeolian mode, I have root minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh, which is our first chord, so we can leave that as it is. As it is. We need to delete the next chord, because that was for Phrygian, and we need to look at the formula of our Aeolian mode. So the formula of the Aeolian mode is root, major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, minor seventh, and um, what we're trying to do here is find the characteristic note of Aeolian. Well, we know that the characteristic note is not going to be root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. Why? Because those four notes are common to Aeolian, Dorian, Phrygian. We need to find the note or the notes that differentiate Aeolian from its other minor mode friends. So that's going to be a second and a sixth. But which one? Major second, minor second? Major sixth, minor sixth. Well, if we take the major second, that does eliminate Phrygian. Great. But it doesn't eliminate Dorian, right? Because Dorian and Aeolian both have a major second, so that's not enough. What about the sixth? Well, Aeolian has a minor sixth. Phrygian also has a ma uh, minor sixth. Dorian has a major sixth, that's great, but... So, in other words, we need to have those two notes together. The major second and the minor sixth need to be heard at some point in the chord progression to exclude the Phrygian and Dorian. Why not Locrian? Well, you should know if you watched Monday's video. If not, just keep watching. We're almost there. So we need to hear in this chord a major second and a minor sixth, which in D would be major second, and then the minor sixth would be right here. So we need to hear these two notes. So maybe I can make a chord. If I just play that, that's that's going to be really thin because my first chord had four notes, so I need to have at least three there. 
So use your ears and find the missing notes that you want to use that are extracted from the aeolian. So again, I need this. Why not? Why not? Let's try that. Because I've got my major second to my minor sixth in there. That sounds great. Okay, I'm gonna quantize that. Copy that second chord to the end, and we have our Aeolian backing track. Now for the last one, the Locrian, why did we leave it there? It is a minor mode because it has a minor third, but if I look at the extraction from um, the, the four note extraction chord that is from the Locrian, I'll have root, minor third. We knew that because it's a minor mode. Diminished fifth, aha. Diminished fifth and minor seventh. Diminished fifth, that's the only mode that has a diminished fifth. Therefore, really, in essence, I can only have a one chord backing track, and that'll be enough. The, the extraction chord, root, minor third, uh, diminished fifth, and minor seventh is enough. So let's record that. I'm gonna take my uh, bass and drums, Paste that here. I'm gonna record my first chord, which is a half diminished chord, uh, minus seven flat five. Over that. That enough, that is enough for Locrian. But to make things not as boring, we're gonna add a second chord and that's where freedom comes. As long as the notes are extracted from D Locrian, you're fine, you can do whatever you want. So um, just, let's just pick some, some notes. Um, we'll pick that one. We now have our Locrian backing track. The first chord is enough to know we're in Locrian because of that flat five to diminished fifth. We added a second chord just for fun to complete things, but you can't play anything else but D Locrian. One thing that's important is to know that that D is a constant D there. That attracts all the notes. You don't have to just use a constant D. That's kind of boring. What I could do, and I might do that um, just later off the video when I before I prepare this pack for you guys. But what I could do is uh, take my D and replace it with a riff that is built in the mode that I'm using. So, for example, the first one was the Ionian. I could erase that that uh, bass and riff around it, just like a guitar player would do. I take my D major scale. and just build a riff and play around it. I strongly encourage you to try that on your own and see what comes up. But just remember, the important thing is to have enough notes to give the listener or the player uh, a really strong clue as to which mode you're working with. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. You can download those seven backing tracks that we just created for free along with a PDF with the, the modes that, um, that goes with them so that you can play those modes and practice them in real time. All you need to do is follow the link below, enter your email so that I can send you those charts and the backing tracks we just did. If you are already on my newsletter, you can still 
enter your email. You're not going to be signed up twice. This will just tell me that um, you want the vacuum tracks we just did. And you're going to stay on the, on the list. You're not going to be uh, signed to multiple lists like that. Just one. That's my newsletter. And um, if you have not signed up to my newsletter yet, you should just by visiting the link below. And I send about two emails a week with some additional content and um, backing tracks, free stuff sometimes. And every once in a while, I'll tell you about one of my courses on guitarplayback.com, which I charge for. That's how I make a living. But no hard feelings if you don't buy anything. Just get the backing tracks we just worked on today. Thank you for watching these videos. Watch more, subscribe, and do whatever you want. This is your channel, as well as mine a little bit. <laughs> if you have questions, leave them below. I might pick some for next Wednesday's Q&A. Thank you. I'll see you next time. See you.